Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. Today is a nice frosty day. Uh, started out at 14, supposed to get up to 50, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, today is starts the fourth week. The pigs have been on farm for three weeks now. You can kind of see them, they're picking up there in the sunlight. They're getting some sun warming up. Uh, they've been on pasture now for three weeks. And uh, actually been on pasture officially for one week, two weeks. Uh, they were sequestered in our little training pasture here. But uh, just wanted to give an update and show you how uh, we've had to make some fence adjustments and continue to do some because uh, we've got some jailbreakers on this uneven ground. So come along. So one of the issues with uh, not being on the farm full time, being an off, uh, having an off farm job, is uh, during the day you don't know what your livestock is doing. I came home the other night and all the pigs were standing right here, which is not inside the pasture. And all this ground you can see torn up, had it heaved up against the poultry netting there where the chickens are. And really just, just did a really good job of turning all this over. The one spot I got grass in the entire 100 acres and that's what they tear up. So, um, clearly a little frustrating when that happens, but uh, again, nobody's fault but mine. It's, it's just the things that I test with the fence. Again, it's been a while since I've had piglets. It's been almost two years now. So some of the things you forget as far as the fence height when it comes to smaller pigs. And I'll, I'll turn here and show you. So I'm not sure if the camera's picking up that glowing line of fence. Well, well clearly the pigs follow a path of least resistance. They see the green and grassy, uh, they, they want to get in the sun, they come this way. So I just, I've had to come through and, and lower my fence. But again, fence going up the side of a mountain like this, there's all these little uh, dips and valleys. I even showed you uh, in a couple videos ago, even this little white oak, there's a, there's a spot that one of the pigs just walked right under. Fence didn't even come in contact with her. So I've had to go back and using extra step in posts and, and put some things in place there. And a lot of you gave me some great input on how you guys handle uneven ground and getting uh, getting low electric in some of those little valleys. So we're going to implement some of those because I've only done this, what, what I consider the easternmost portion of this south pasture. So I've gotten it low. I think we're good to go in some spots there or most spots there. But uh, there's some real tricky ones up here on the hill and I'll show you. Okay, so this is the exact opposite of what I was shooting. I was obviously down there at the workshop shooting this way. And this is the top corner. So the fence comes up, really makeshift gate here, and then starts what I consider the southernmost portion of the line going all the way back. So uh, you can see some of the, in the leave disturbance there where they were getting under. Now again, I've lowered that. I don't think they're getting under now. But I've got this one spot where I've attached my anchor point to this beech tree and it's high and you can see on the other side some leaves disturbed there. So we're going we're gonna to correct that by uh, lowering the anchor point actually. So again, the issues that I run into in this typical West Virginia, and I know I'm not the only one, it's not just West Virginia, is like here, the, the fence is literally three inches from this tree that's uprooted years ago and there was actually a little sapling growing here that I cut so um, three inches here but as I come up to my attachment point my anchor point it's almost 16 inches so ideally the thing to do would be to stick a step in post here lift that up and of course drop that so you can just imagine it's just a it's just a series of vectors or series of angles to try to keep to keep that fence as low as possible and I know some of you are probably asking, Troy, where's your second strand? I thought you were going to do a second strand. I have not yet, simply because trying to figure out the height of the first strand. And then the second strand, of course, I like to space um, you know, a certain distance, you know, 8, 10, 12 inches, depending on uh, where in the pasture and the size of the, of the pigs at that point. So, yeah, we're going to have to play around here a little bit and see what we can do to get this uh, dialed in. But definitely want to lower this anchor point. And I got to do it without uh, taking my tension off because my tensioner is on that side down the hill. So I'm going to tie a new one on and then uh, cut the old one.
All right, so uh, swing around here. Got that lowered. In fact, back off of it a little bit. Had to get where it's almost on the ground on the back. But you can see we still have a good, what, eight inches, six inches. And then, uh, so I moved that T-post up right at that little down tree. And uh, you can see um, the browse line there. You can see where they've turned up all these leaves. My fence is attached to that that uh, little white oak there. And then goes on down to that next step and post and so forth. But uh, just since I've made this adjustment a couple nights ago, just lowering everything down, then they've I can see where they've stayed over. But um, yeah, little things like this. It's just it's just typical West Virginia. So. Uh, Sometimes I'll even cheat and throw big rocks in, like uh, like I'm about to do here. Point time. So here's a spot on the back line that's hurt near impossible. So right now I've got just a step in post doing nothing. Um, if you can see this, this is the line, this corner of this tree, corner, trees don't have corners, dummy, uh, from this tree over to this little sapling again shouldn't be nailing the saplings i know but this is a watershed you can see the stone this whole thing is just solid rock all the way around and right now you can see that's all the way up to my thigh so there's no way in the world that's keeping a pig pigs our size from going anywhere so this guy needs to be he needs to be down about right there and that still produces a pretty good saddle here. So maybe taking this part down. So yeah, so that may make more sense to drive in a, try to drive in a T-post if I can find purchase for my T-post in all this rock. And then uh, put a clip there really low to draw this down. It's still kind of high there, so we may have to put an obstacle or two. On the flow. How low do you go? All the way to the flow. So a little off topic, but I think this is a really good opportunity to look at this since there's no leaves on the trees. You know, everything looks open right now. It looks like a um, looks like a barren wasteland actually. But the reason why I keep so many trees in here, I will thin some of these out. But the reason why I keep so many, and just just look at the inventory we have here. So here's a beech tree that produces beech nuts, of course. Here's a huge. This this guy's a monster. Look up here. Look at that canopy. So when that thing gets a good mass season, that whole bowl is just full of beech nuts. Here's his brother right here, another huge beech. And you've got an oak. And then over here, that tree's kind of got a weird slant to it, right beside Liam. That oak tree produces so many acorns, it is like walking on marbles over there. In the fall where the pigs are right now, where the boys are, it'd literally be like walking on marbles. It's crazy, crazy amount of acorns that come from that. And again, just a series of oak trees throughout here. 
So I've got beech, I've got oak, there's a hickory or two inside here. Uh, just in this small area, uh, tons of protein producing trees that obviously provide shade, help with water. This, this creek runs about uh, you know, eight to 10 months out of the year. So there's always water here. If they want to root around, they can find water. Obviously we've got the spring. So all the things that come with having this um, um, silva pasture or for woodland area there. So to me, that's, on, that's more of a benefit than if this was just all pasture grass. Uh, the pigs can enjoy this a lot more. So here's a good indicator. The fence is not on right now because I'm working on it, obviously. And I know the angle doesn't help, but you can see the height, especially the pig there back in the sun, the black one furthest to the left. That's where I'm trying to get the fence. I want it to be about eyebrow level. Because you can see when they're, when they're plowing with their noses, they got their faces down, they're not really looking up. And if they get to where that fence hits them in the mid spine, then they're just going to keep, they're just going to shoot on through. In my experience, so I, you, know, you really want them to get ears or eyebrows or maybe raise their head and take it in the snout. But they're definitely enjoying this sunny day. And they haven't crossed yet, even though the fence isn't on. So check this out. The spring is still rolling. Obviously, this time of year, of course, it's going to roll. It's so wet. But uh, you can see where there's actually been a little bit of slippage right here. This... Uh, I don't know if you'd call that calving like you would an iceberg or a glacier, but that has kind of slipped. And there's water actually just underneath that T-post and right through there just come out like crazy. Fills this hole that the pigs made. And then, of course, just goes on down. You can see there's a little wallow they made there. Goes on down, goes right past Liam, and then goes on down my, my main road. So i got to get that uh, draining away. But... Uh, Definitely want to tap into that and see if I can dig down a little bit and put a spring box trying to find the source. Hopefully it's, because this is my road, obviously. I want a spring box in the road, but hopefully I can dig out a little bit right here and um, and be able to put a spring box in and be able to access. You can imagine um, having water there accumulating and just even if it's just a small 4x4 four four box or barrel and then have it plumbed down to the farrowing shed. You, know, well, you can't really tell the relief, but that's probably, if I was walking out straight, I'd walk across the top of that ridge of that building easily. So what is that? I think that's 15 feet off the ground. So it's a 15 foot drop. So that'd be plenty of pressure. You could have pressurized water in the farrowing shed just from, uh, just from an outlet of water right here. So here's an interesting spot, and again, West Virginia topography. So this is a pretty steep watershed coming down uh, behind the boys there. And you can see my fence. I've got it almost on the ground there at that tree. And I've got it on this depot's pretty low, big, big rock here. And I've thrown debris in here, but when we get a really good frog choker, all this washes down more. So it'd be ideal to have this tensioned about right here, but solid stone right in the middle of the creek ain't going to happen. So... Uh, one thing we could do is do like I did at Mother Creek Crossing, is take some wire and just kind of let it hang down, kind of spiral it around here so it hangs down. It makes almost like a little drape or a curtain that uh, would deter them from wanting to cross it. So I got most of the south pasture taken care of, pretty much every area I'm worried about. Try to plug the fence back in. I think there for a second if the north pasture was hot. <laughs> it's not. This is the fence to the north pasture, so it's not hot right now. Nobody's on it. Um, but uh, I'll just have to observe. We'll come back and, and just see. If the pigs are standing out one day, then we'll know. And, and the neat thing about it is they leave a little trail where they get out, so you can kind of see where they're, uh, where they're breaching. But uh, one of y'all had suggested, it's a really neat idea, uh, and I'd never thought about it, suggested hanging um, aluminum cans or metal cans from the wire. Hang it down in the low spots, and the pig gets interested in that. It's kind of curious to see what that is, especially if it's got a little scent associated with it. Comes up and, of course, taps it, and whammo. Uh, breaks him from sucking eggs after that point. Uh, I never thought about that. That's actually neat to, neat to try. I may have to put that in the, uh, in the tool trick there. Uh, ironically, when, when we were kids, my mom and, and some friends, when they had gardens... They wanted to keep the deer out of the gardens. They'd put an electric fence up. The deer would still kind of go through it. 
So what they'd start doing is wrapping, just kind of wiping peanut butter on the on the wire, and a deer would come up, smell that peanut butter, and lick it, and then take a shot like that, and then it would it would train those deer specifically to stay away. So I'd, I've seen that done before, but I've never you know thought about the metal can. But uh, we'll keep you all posted on what's going on, and we'll just continue to update you on what's going on with our pigs. All right, take care, everybody.